All right, so let's pretend you bought your CNC and you had a good idea. You started making some things, they started selling well, but tapes, glues, nails, and screws just aren't keeping up with production anymore. It's time to graduate to something a little bit better. Today, we're gonna to be making custom vacuum fixtures using the Airweights work holding system. No tapes, no glues, no nails, no screws, no onion skins, no tabs, just a finished, fully complete component when you're done with machining. Okay, so we're gonna jump into our design software and walk through our simple five-step process for how to set up a custom vacuum fixture for your given part. You can see here, my example part is a little cruiser skateboard. The first step is to actually face your fixture plate. So before you do any work to your fixture plate, you'll wanna have a piece of cam, a program that will face as minimally as possible. You're looking to take off, you know, five or 10 thou and just barely kiss the surface to make sure that the Z heights are correct for your machine, your setup, your installation, your calibration. The next step is to create a gasket zone that sits just inside the boundary of your finished part. So you can see there's my part, and here is my channel uh, that's just 20 thou deep. It's mostly just to indicate where I want to install the gasket and help guide me. The next step is to note if you have any internal through cuts. If you do have internal through cuts, you need to account for them. Because right now, if that was an interior vacuum zone and I breach through and machine these holes, I'm gonna lose suction. We're going to create another set of marked locations around those interior through cuts. So if I hide the part again, you can see that I've got these two locations now that are also marked for gasket. The next step is to make sure that if I have any off cuts, any loose parts of material that are not part of the finished component, that I account for those. To deal with off cuts, there's a few different approaches. The first one is to create a custom zone for the offcut so that as you cut through and separate it from your final part, it doesn't go flying. Next option is to actually just turn it into chips. You can pocket that area out. And then the final thing you can do is use dowels. You could drill holes in the material and then they'll be receiving holes in the fixture underneath and you place dowels through and it constrains the stock just enough to keep it in place. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna be using the first two methods. So I'll be actually making some custom vacuum zones and I'll also be turning these lower areas into chips by just pocketing them out. And then the final step is to create vacuum ports. It's very beneficial to include the DXF of our vacuum tables that are available on our website and bring that in in order to place them. And you can see that I'm positioning the vacuum ports intentionally such that they align with the channels in the vacuum table. So there's one here, this sits in a channel, this sits in a channel, and this one is actually sitting directly over one of our vacuum ports in the vacuum tables. It's also beneficial to position these ports relatively centered on your sealed volume. Uh, I'm gonna be doing two-sided machining on this part, so I do have a drilling operation for locating pins that'll inter interface with the mounting screws for the trucks of the skateboard. So when I flip the part over on the side two, it'll be very accurately located relative to side one. So now we're ready to export our cam and head back to the machine. So here's our fixture. Step one was to face it. We did have a little tiny miss, but I'm just gonna let that slide. Uh, we marked our border of our part, just inside the perimeter of our part where we're gonna install a gasket. We're gonna section off any through cuts here account for any off cuts, and then we placed our ports. The next step is we're gonna actually gasket this fixture. Then we'll be ready to poke our holes through and start machining our component. Okay, so the gasket material we're gonna to use today is called onboard gasket. This comes in a roll form and it's a 16th of an inch thick. And it's called onboard gasket because it sits on top of the board that you're using as a dedicated fixture. So I'm gonna start uh, with our perimeter of our part here. On the tighter corners, I will probably create a splice. Before you start, it's always nice to give yourself a fresh cut with a razor blade to minimize leaks. So I'm gonna go perpendicular and just go straight through. And that gives me a nice clean cut. It's important to note that as you're installing any sort of gasket, we're trying not to stretch the material. So I'm gonna come 
to a point here and then I'm going to actually trim. Then I'm gonna continue going all around. Again, just following this channel closely as I can. Doesn't have to be perfect. Your cutting tool will trim it if it needs to be trimmed. So here's our finished fixture. You can see we've got our perimeter seal around the outside. Two gaskets that are gonna account for our interior through cuts. Our off cuts up here that we're gonna account for and hold on to. There'll be some off cuts down here that we're gonna turn into chips. And then there's going to be a side two with pinholes that sit outside the seal and a vacuum zone that'll hold the side two geometry in place while we're machining that side of the part. So before we put this back on the vacuum table, I'm actually just gonna pop through these vacuum ports so that we have air coming up into the fixture. So now, as you can see, there's daylight through here and we have vacuum ports that feed into these vacuum pockets. I'm gonna use two steel dowel pins to position the vacuum fixture back in the same position that it was machined in. These dowel pins are a half inch in length. They come with each Airweight's work holding system. So I'm gonna put these pins in the table, front left and back right, uh, opposing corners always, and then we'll take our fixture. We have our locating holes at the front and our locating slots at the back, and we'll drop that on there. We're ready to machine our example part now. If you have an idea, you're a business owner, you've got something that you're making in a lot of volume, this approach is definitely for you. It does take some work to set it up, but once you get it set up, it pays so many dividends because you don't have to think about anything. You load material, you press go, and you just keep churning on parts all day long. If that's something that's interesting to you, please come check us out at airweights.com. Our fixture plates are available for sale there, along with all of our different gasket material options. If you'd like to see us do videos like this in the future, please leave a comment down below and we'll be sure to put out some more content related to that. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video.